Okay, on the Alpha Drone website we had uh, someone asking a question about the Thunder robots. And since I have one that doesn't work, I figured why not go ahead and strip it apart and perhaps they'll be able to see whatever it is they need to know to get theirs working again. But being a tin toy, you have lots of tabs and they're all going to have to be opened up. So I don't know that there'll be a whole lot of talking here as compared to uh, my normal videos. There's two small metal tabs that I'm very slowly and carefully straightening. One, to not scratch the robot, and two, to get the tab fastener off. Here is the tab fastener. The two pieces of metal go into that slot and then get bent over for the front and back and then this metal button part gets folded over to hide said uh, deal. There's the first two. There's a bunch of them. See, some of them when they put them together the piece of metal is put in then you insert a small pin device and bend the pin. So the only way you can get those off is actually to carefully apply some force. You can see the two metal tabs that went in and then were bent over. I want to try to remember when they go back on, put them on the same way they had the large dot toward the front. So we'll try to uh, we'll try to remember that when I get ready to put it together, which I probably won't do on camera because I think is video will probably end up being more than long enough as is. But underneath that piece that I just took off, the decorative ear piece or antenna, whatever you want to refer to it, there were two more tabs which I just straightened. So here they are folded over, in case you're not familiar with how this stuff works. You always want to bend the tabs slowly. Heat does build up micro fractures and then the little pieces of metal tend to break. You generally can open one of these pin toys once and bend them back together. So that means you've bent the tabs twice, once to open it and once to put it back together without them dropping off. And if you have to open it again, you're already starting to live on borrowed time at that point, whether the metal tabs are going to fall off or not. A lot of it has to do with the gauge of the metal. A lot of it has to do with was the thing already opened up once before by somebody else before you got hold of it. This top uh, metal ring part, that's got to come off so we can get to the tabs on the very top of this. And it was held on the same way as the ear pieces were. There were front and back tabs. You get those off. Now we're up to the uh, these top two. Of course, this is just the first part. There's plenty more bits here we've got to uh, undo. But once we get all this done, we're going to be able to lift the front of the body off, and then we'll be able to see a little bit more of what's going on inside the toy. In my case, I might even be able to see why it isn't uh, working, like a broken wire, cold solder joint, you know, all the normal suspects. So I've lifted off the uh, chrome side pieces. Okay, so that has all the tabs on the top part of the body free. Now we've got to get to the two sets on both sides under the arm. Here's what it looks like before you do anything other than bend the uh, little caps down out of the way. There were uh, at least three companies that produced these reproductions. There was uh, originally Tin Tom Toys, or TTT, and uh, his Thunder Robot was probably the best. Then there was... Um, 
the haha -ha version and there was also joy toys version now the ones sold by Schilling I believe if I remember right initially were the Tin Tom toy version they kinda got cheaper and cheaper as they went along for example this one see these bellows those are hard plastic on the original toy which was made in Japan in 1968 late 60s this is bellows material is flexible it could move because this whole hand part actually would retract in when the arms came up to reveal the guns and the hands that flash and light but none of the repros had that mechanical function in them the original Tin Tom Toys ones did have the flexible bellows but you can see by the time you got to this toy they went to hard plastic because it's cheaper and I know this is a real cheap one besides that because the the paint job is really crappy on it. All right, I dropped one. I found it. And I got to do the two on this side now. So I'm going to start by carefully folding these down, and don't fold them down any more than necessary. It's like I say, they can drop off from being bent too many times or being bent too quickly. So never bend anything any more than you absolutely have to. Especially if you're working on a vintage toy that has some value. Um, these repros don't really have any, any value. Other than they're fun to play with and, and they're fun to mod. I mean, I've, I have modded without exaggerating hundreds of these. Not just paint jobs, but functions. Just all kinds of different modifications to them. And sometimes it was just a repair, which isn't a mod, but so many of them are uh, born dead that you can get them fairly inexpensively and then repair them. Okay. We also have uh, where the gearbox tabs in the crotch. Since we're going to be taking the front off, I'm going to bend just that front tab. I'm going to leave the rear one in place for now. Because I don't know that we need to go any further than the front one to, to see the secrets. Okay, so really the only thing that's left holding the front on at this point, if I remember right, I can't remember if there were tabs under the mouth or not, we'll find out, um, is this chrome armoring. See these little divot holes? When they go in, they stick that little metal probe in and, and bend the tabs back. So, again, we have to... Uh, you have to manually free those up. In this case, they didn't even actually bend the tabs. They just inserted them. So that's good. It makes it easier for us. One last tab I'd almost forgot about. And this inside top right up here is a little tab there. You're going to have to straighten that if you want to pull the front off. Like so. It's been just enough years since I've had one of these apart. There we go. There we go. The leg is kind of holding the crotch in place, unfortunately. I'm going to get a bigger screwdriver to try and lift the front half of the body. If this ran, I would just run the legs and get it out of the way. Okay, reveal. I've got the front off. Oh no, look, we can we can see without going any further. This dangling wire here had gotten caught in the uh, spinning light. This light spins around and is yanked free. It looks like it was soldered to the frame right there originally to give the frame a common ground. So in my case, I don't really need to go any further, but to, well, there's some nasty wiring going on here. But I think to answer the questions of the guy on Alphadrome, I will take this fiber board off, this here. 
This provides the clicking sound when the toy is running as well as um, the flashing light in the hand part. And this leg linkage over here is bent too. This thing's all bent around. Maybe that's why that leg felt so tight earlier. One on this side's okay. You know what I should do is uh, have the soldering gun warming up. If I'd been thinking ahead, I would have had this warming up because that way it actually could have run it before I took it all the way apart. But we'll let that warm up. And let's see about taking the fiber board off so you guys can see what's hiding under here. The thing I don't like about pinching the wires in these places to keep them out of the way is if it pinches through the insulation on the wire, then that's a short. And I've seen it happen more times than you would care to believe. I mean, it's a handy way to uh, try and do your wiring, but... And over here, they actually stuck some wiring between the fiber board and the metal frame right there. I've seen them where that's tight enough that it actually bites through the wire and then that shorts out the system. So when you did a bunch of it over on this side, see this red wire here? It's pinched in between the fiber board and then the white one pinched in between. Not good. Unless you were the one doing the pinching and you know that you're not applying too much force. Then what the hey, right? Okay. Straighten those enough, I think, where we can get this uh, fiber board lifted out of the way. As you can see, here's the, the clicker. And it also works as a contact for making the lights flash. Man, what a wiring mess. The original ones from the 60s were so much nicer. So, what's going on in here is you've got the motor down here that turns this gear, turns these two gears, and these two gears have a different number of teeth on them. The diameter is very close, but it's just slightly off. Usually it's just off by one tooth. That means that one of the gears is going to be going faster or slower than the other. There's an uh, angle piece that crawls up a little slot in there. Let's see if we can work that around to where you can see it. Bring it around to the front. Kind of see, kind of see a little slot on that gear in there. It's going to crawl up on that, and that's going to spread the two gears apart. And what that does is we'll shift this whole axle over. This gear will now come over and engage this arm gear, whereas right now this gear is engaging the walk. So as these two spread, the walk gear will move out of the way so it stops walking. This gear will engage here, which will cause the arms to raise. And this gear that it's going to engage with, you can see it's a partial gear. It's not completely round. It engages till it runs out of teeth, right there. See the end of that flat gear, the teeth end? And it'll just sit there and it'll chatter on that last tooth. And that's your gun firing action And when this... Uh, this piece here comes around and catches on this fiberboard part we talked about and makes the clicking sound. So there you have it. That's the secrets of what's going on in there. I'm trying to scratch some of the crud off the top of this metal frame so that we can reattach, reattach the wire hopefully that came off there. Let's see if the uh, soldering gun's warm enough. I've got it on full power. It's a soldering pencil actually. See if we can get some solder to stick to the steel. If it doesn't stick there, I may try somewhere else. And this is the good solder. This isn't your crappy stuff that they sell these days. It's got the actual lead in it and it's got flux in it. Okay. Reattached. Let's uh, get a couple of D cells. Let's find out if we can get some action in here without uh, without throwing all these wires into that spinning light up in the top. 
See the light spins and it's supposed to kind of provide a little bit of light through the eyes, a little bit of light through the uh, top plastic parts in the body. And because it's rotating it looks cool. Okay. Take this. Put that in there. Shut it down before I get my fingers caught in something. Okay. I think everything will stay out of the way if we try to run it. So as we're in walk mode right now, those two gears will start separating, and there we are in arm mode. Now the guns in the hand, the lights in the guns aren't going to light because we have the clicker removed right now. You can see those two gears I talked about? They're going to start separating again. And watch the gear shift. And there's how it shifts. Let's try putting the uh, clicker board back in place. Without making the wiring any worse. I may just hold this on right now with just these two center ones. Okay, I'm going to leave the rest of the wires hanging right now, and I'll do a neaten up job. But the clicker should, uh, sh should work at this point. Of course, now you can't see what's going on in there, but you'll, we'll find out. And there's the clicking and the light. So there you have it. It's your Thunder Robot. And it doesn't really matter which one you get. The mechanics are going to basically be the same. Even back to the original Japanese one is very similar, just higher quality. And this guy just wants to basically fall over backwards, so there's a leg linkage uh, issue that I'll probably address before I put it back together too. I try to get it standing, see if I let go of it. Granted, the front of the body will add a little bit of weight, but not enough to keep it standing. It uh, has to do with the uh, distance of the linkage. Man, I may not deal with that at all. I may just let it be. Let the next person that owns it. I don't know. I'll look into it. I'll take the bottom of the feet off where I can see where the linkage mounts. See if there's an easy way to make an adjustment there. I remember it was an issue even on the Tin Ton Toys version that originally came out and I had some easy fixes for it. But this is a cheaper version. This is probably the uh, Joy Toy version, I don't know, because of the hard plastic bellows in the arms.